This is a piece of Paduk I've had sitting around for quite a while and now I have a project I want to use it for. I'm going to cut some strips off of this and make a little mini vase. So let me cut these strips off and we'll get set up to cut the segments. Here's the wedgie sled set up to do 18 segments per ring. I'll be making three rings and then re-slicing those rings to a thinner section. And I'll need 54 of these pieces cut the way I have it figured out. So let's start cutting them. Here's the uh, first ring. I stopped cutting. I just wanted to check them and I had exactly 18 pieces. So I put it together with a rubber band around it and the joints are as perfect as you can get. So I'll go ahead and cut the rest of them. I may use the rubber band to glue these together. They're small and a, a hose clamp is not that easy on a smaller one. Plus I have another type of a clamp that I've made. I'll show you that if I decide to use it. What I have here is a sheet of dyed veneer. I start by making strips and then I cut them to length with a little trimming fixture that I made. I need 54 of these pieces. All right, time to glue these segments together. Took all the fuzzies off of it with real fine sandpaper. I have 18 veneers sitting here that goes in between each one. So, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. It's, it's like a little tourniquet. I saw this a couple years ago. I think it, I think it was Earl at Earl's segment shop or something like that on YouTube and he was making these and I thought they looked pretty clever so I made some. So let me get it on here show you how this works. So I take a, a little metal rod and put it into here and start it, twisting it like you would a tourniquet. On the end of here I have a channel cut and this almost got spring action. You turn and it snaps in and locks so it stays tight. Let the glue dry and go to the next step. I have the three discs set up on my bandsaw sled and I'm going to cut them about a quarter inch thick and I should get three slices out of each one. This is just a little waste block. I'm going to start building the vase on there. This is a piece of Wenge. I'm going to get it glued on, let it set a while, and then I'll glue the, the first ring onto here. Put a block in between it and clamp it tight. Alright, here is the first ring of nine. I'm going to get it centered and press it up against here. Let it tack up for a little while. So now I'm getting glue on the face of this disc. I 
and I have a piece of the black veneer that I will place on here and I don't think that'll slide off. Just have a piece of MDF here. It's going to be uh, the block that helps flatten everything out. All right. See you on the next step. All right, I have all of the segmented rings glued on. I'm going to do some shaping on the last three that I just put on here. And then I will make a wenge piece to go on top. Once I had three rings glued onto the base, I went ahead and turned that to shape. And I did the same thing on the next three. So right now I'm putting the final shape on the top three. Let me get this cleaned out in here and it looks like it might be ready to sand. Then I'll cut a piece of Wingate to go up on top. Okay, I have the Wingate glued on. I let it sit there and tack up for about 10 minutes. I'm going to put this little block in here so I can apply even pressure. I blended the piece of Wingate in. I drilled a hole in it and blended it into the inside and I've sanded it most of the way but I didn't film that because I couldn't get a view on it with the camera without having me in the way. So right now I'm going to bring the tailstock up. I'm going to use the cone center just for a little support. It may not need it but this is going to get thin so I'm going to do it anyways. It's not going to hurt. I picked the center segment and I'm going to take my calipers and I'm going to turn it down to a little bit oversized of what I want. I'll do that to the end here and I'll do it to where it joins the base and then we will create the shape on it. And I mark this because it'd be hard to see where it's at. They all look the same. I'll put another little mark on there so I know where I'm at. About 1200. Just take my parting tool and start cutting that down. Okay, that's good there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do some shaping here and uh, then we'll reach in and check the wall thickness. And then I'll take the parting tool and go a little bit deeper and sneak up on that wall. Because it's going to be fairly thin. Got a freshly sharpened half inch bowl gouge and this should cut nice. All I'm working on now is just to get a pretty consistent wall thickness and a nice looking shape. So we'll go ahead and cut some more. Now that top edge, that's it right there. I don't want to take any more off of that.
the wall is looking pretty good to here. I want to take more material off of this area. And I'll do a little shear scraping on the Wenge. Because it seems to cut a little better that way. But it's a little bit aggressive for the Padouk, so I'm going to use the negative brake scraper. Freshly sharpened. Of course, these are segments. This is uh, just flat grain, and there's a lot of end grain in it, of course. Very little end grain in a segment. Sure what that is. It's, oh, it's actually the grain of the wood. <laughs> it looked like a looked like a line I needed to cut away, a little groove, but it's as the grain spins, it's making that little line. It's never going to go away. There won't be anything left by the time I'm done if I keep doing that. Well, I like it. Now, got to figure out the right place to cut it off. Before I do that, I'm going to get set up to sand and I'll get the inside finalized on the sanding. If this is so smooth right now, it hardly needs sanding. Well, I'll finish sanding it up to, I don't know where I'll stop, it's so small I might go up to a thousand. And I'm going to put a finish on that I haven't, haven't used on anything like this. And I haven't used it for many years, but I'll show it to you when we get there. And I think it'll look really nice on it. Let me get it all sanded up and I'll be back when it's ready to put the finish on it. All right, I'm ready to put the finish on. I've been waiting for this. What I'm going to use is tongue oil. That's what I have in here. There we go. Boy, this that wood is so pretty. I put around 14 coats of tongue oil on, wet and dry sanding with 500 in between each coat. And here I'm wet sanding with 1000 grit in preparation for the abrasive paste. So right now I'm going over the turning with the abrasive paste. And now the polishing paste. This is just a mixture of beeswax and mineral oil. has come to remove this piece from its block. See how this cuts at about 900. Wenge is hard and brittle so I tested it and it snapped right off. Good thing I did. So right now I'm turning the block down so I can use it as a jam chuck to finish off the bottom of the little vase. I used a paper towel here to help give it a good grip and I gently sanded the center section with sandpaper up to 400 grit. A little bit of sanding with the grain and we're in good shape. Okay, go ahead and get this off and get some finish on the bottom. 
Well, here's the little vase that's all finished. It has a, a brick pattern on it. It's made from Wenge, Paduk, and dyed veneer. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I like the pattern that's on there. It's sort of a random. Nothing is meant to line up. It looks a lot bigger right there than what it really is. It's three and a quarter inches tall and it's two and a quarter inches at the widest point here. And the top's about an inch and a half and the bottom is approximately the same. The walls are slightly under an eighth of an inch. This will give you a better idea of the size. Pretty happy with how it turned out. It has a nice reflection going on in that grain. You can really see it when it rotates. So it was a lot of fun to do. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And a special thanks to all my subscribers. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to my channel and you feel so inclined, please consider subscribing. Thanks again, and until the next time, I'll see you later.